Hi everybody and welcome to this presentation. I'm so happy and honoured to be here with you today at the FMCE 2020 Botswana Conference. The title of my presentation is How Can Facilities Managers on the Continent Prepare for the Onset of, the new, of, a, of a New Pandemic? So buckle up, sit tight, 30 minutes, off we go. Thanks. Could we have predicted COVID? A lot of people say we couldn't, but it's been 100 years since the Spanish flu, uh, the H1N1 virus in 1918, with over 50 million dead. That's the last main pandemic that we seem to be referring to. But in 1957, we had the Asian flu, 4 million dead. In 1968, we had the Hong Kong flu, 4 million dead. 17 years since SARS 2003, which most of us can remember, that was also a coronavirus with a mortality of 9.5% of those people caught it, they died. Not that many, but a high mortality rate. It's been 11 years since the swine flu, 2009. That was also H1N1, which was the same as the Spanish flu. Half a million dead. It's been eight years since the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, also a coronavirus, and that had a very high mortality rate of 35%. Uh, 35 Again, not many people died, but a high mortality rate. So really, when COVID-19 hit us uh, in 19, could we not have predicted it? We're sitting currently with just over a million deaths, rising at an average of over 6,000 a day, with massive spikes in the UK, Europe, and the US. So we couldn't have predicted COVID? Really? Why did we not see this coming? Is it really the, the black swan event that everybody says it is? The writing was definitely on the wall, but we just didn't see it coming. So what are we doing about planning for the next pandemic? Well, this is not rocket science. You need to get your risk planning in place and set out, and set out as in ISO 41000, the global FM uh, standards, with your disaster recovery plans, business continuity plans, and recovery plans. But we're not through this one yet, and it's all very well planning and preparing for the next pandemic. But when that's done, what's the, what, what then? What do, we, what do we need to do? We are indeed navigating turbulent times now, but the world of work is changing, and with it is the relevance of FM. FM is going to become obsolete if we do not adapt. The assets are shrinking, but the workplace still goes on. FM needs to pivot to remain relevant or, as a prominent industry expert said two weeks ago on a call that I was on, he cannot see a future for FM. It is going to die unless we change. So with risk comes opportunity. And that's what I want to focus on today. You know, McKinsey produced a paper at the beginning of this virus back in, I think it was March, with, uh, which was entitled Corona Pirates, The Path to the Next Normal. They set out five stages. The first stage was to resolve. The resolve was going to continue business as best as possible, but from remote locations. This talked about disaster recovery, risk, and employee safety were all paramount and at, top, at the top of everyone's list. But national lockdowns in most countries meant the need that most organizations had to send their people home to close down their offices. Then came resilience. As organizations overcame the first hurdles of mobilizing their employees to work from home, the learning curve steeply turned from resolving to resilience. The acute pullback in economic activity that was necessary to protect lives had naturally affected the economy and livelihoods. COVID-19 had accelerated what was already an experiment in many places and in many, certain, many corporations in terms of working from home. And they turned this into a global necessity and that was required to still conduct business as usual. Then came return. As we now contemplate the return to work in an, era, sorry, in an era of uncertainty, we see the virus is on the upsurge in Europe and America. In South Africa, we are yet to see a meaningful second wave, but it's likely to be a case of when, not if. And with the economic situation in Africa very different to that in the Northern Hemisphere, as we reactivate our workplaces, we need to be careful not to turn what has to be a biosafe environment into something akin to a hospital rather than an hospitable environment 
that is capable of providing the hospitality expected of a modern corporate environment. Then came reimagine. As we now start to polish our crystal balls and look into the future, the crisis has revealed not just our vulnerabilities, but also opportunities to improve the performance of business and the real estate that enables that business to flourish. We need to pivot and take the opportunity to prepare for an upturn. With this, leaders will need to consider which costs are truly fixed and which are variable, because as the shutting down of huge swathes of office floor space, floor space, floor space excuse me, uh, continue, this has shed light on what is ultimately required versus what is nice to have. And the last stage that McKinsey came up with was this idea of reform. History tells us that following global cataclysmic events, the world has changed forever. The much vaunted new or next normal needs to be envisaged and accommodated and business and corporate real estate reformed to accommodate it. So where are we currently on this continuum? Well, I think we're probably somewhere about here. We're on the return back to the corporate space. In 1905, Einstein published his theory of specific and general relativity. It was a key moment in science. It ushered in the nuclear age and revolutionized the way we look at time. The idea of black holes, neutron stars, and the space-time continuum. This was a tipping point in science and the way in which we understand the world today. I believe that COVID is the catalyst that will change the way we see the workplace and the opportunities that this presents for FM going forward. You know, companies increasingly do not possess all the skills or knowledge inside their organizations to achieve their strategic objectives. But sadly, despite FM being on the front line in the COVID crisis and helping get people out of the office to working from home, and now helping to make the workplace COVID safe in order to get people back to work, FM now seems to be surplus to requirements. Why is this? Well, I believe it's because FM is seen as a non-core function. And, and we've perpetrated this illusion ourselves. Consequently, FM is the target of an aggressively cost-focused approach, meaning that these are the first positions to be slashed. slashed. Post-COVID-19, organizational agility and operational resilience are going to be seen as mission critical. Increasingly, workplace complexity, a new ecosystem and risk requires specialization. So post-COVID, FM needs to pivot and change from being non-core to an enabler of core business. This may not be easy in Africa, as we are not yet very used to the idea of maintenance, let alone FM, and now we're moving on to talking about workplace. But the best way to predict the future is to create it. And FM can create a different future by turning its focus onto the future of work and how this is going to be conducted and how what is going to be required to support it, wherever that work may happen. So there is a well-established correlation between disruption and innovation. Three conditions need to be present. There needs to be a shortage or starvation of resources. There needs to be an increasing pressure on delivery and performance. And I'm sure all of us would accept that the first two conditions exist in abundance and have done so for some time. But what we have now in the COVID crisis is the third condition. It's a paradigm or a perspective shift on how everyone is looking at the workplace. Now is the time when FM will be disrupted beyond recognition. Spaces will self-manage, they will self-clean and self-report. Routine maintenance will, be fu will become fully automated, so there is little or no need for human intervention. The futurist and market expert Alistair Frost said that anyone who still believes that FM will be the same industry, but maybe with a few more screens screwed to the wall, is dangerously out of touch. This may seem a little too futuristic for a continent that does not even have a well-entrenched maintenance culture. But we do not need to make the same mistakes as our forebearers. And when we can stand on the shoulder of these giants, we can plot our way forward. But the reality is that we are facing a perfect storm. The workplace asset base and footprint is shrinking and maintenance is going to become automated. So the reality is that we are facing a vulnerable present with an uncertain future. And this is now a permanent condition more than ever. But we have been at this for a long time. 
This is an extract from a presentation that I made to the South African Facilities Management Association Conference in 2014, where I was predicting that we were heading towards the top of the maturity curve for FM, and that unless we changed, we were an industry based on sand. Included in this presentation was a quote from Dr. Barry Varco from as far back as 2012. We've got to be brave and embrace change. If we do, there's another 25 years of growth and relevance for this industry. But if we don't, heaven help us. We've brought it on ourselves. We've let ourselves become a cost-based industry. Currently, we've got no message to get out of that vicious, vicious death spiral. That was 2012. We're eight years later, and I'm not sure we've even got anywhere close to achieving this. But there is good news on the horizon. Tim Oldman of the Leesman Index said in a conference in June that the boardrooms may be empty, but the workplace is item number one on the board's agenda around the world. Then that this is a once in a career opportunity to prove the value of the workplace to organizations. So let us not look back on this time and regret that we never took this once in a career opportunity that is before us. So what is facility management's value proposition? And I emphasize the management part deliberately. You know, the industry is full of single service providers that represent the FM industry. This is the non-core services that are almost always contracted out to suppliers. The majority of these are focused on delivering value to people. Only maintenance provides service to the asset. And this is where the confusion lays. This is not facilities management. This is facilities maintenance. And to prove this idea, I want you to imagine, take an office, picture an office, empty out all the adults and substitute the kids. What do you have? You have a school. Does the maintenance to the assets change? No. But do the services like cleaning, hygiene, health and safety, catering, and security change? Well, of course they do. Or alternatively, take out the desks and put in beds. What do you have? You have a hotel. Does the maintenance change? No, not materially. But do the services? Absolutely. And we've seen this time and time again, in particular with projects like the Cape Town International Conference Centre, which has been turned into a COVID field hospital. The maintenance doesn't change, but the use does. The services are there for the benefit of the occupants, not necessarily the facility. So FM is the horizontal and professional management discipline that integrates all of these services into one distinct product. What is that product? It is the user or workplace experience. Whilst facilities and its assets have been the historic base of our industry, two things are happening. As I've said, the asset base is disappearing, shrinking or changing, and services are becoming automated. So we as FMs need to pivot to support and enable work wherever it may happen, whether this is working from home, drop-in centers, or the hub and club model, whatever the future of work looks like, and we don't know that yet. Working from home does not mean that services are not required. They are just needed in a different place at a different time and delivered in a different way. And this is the essence of innovation in the service sector. We need to innovate around how the same services are delivered, not the services themselves, which after all are largely commoditized. While the stats prove that working from home will not be a permanent alternative for everyone, particularly in Africa, where the infrastructure and social economic situation means that the majority of our young people in particular are not adequately equipped to work from home. FM at the communal workspace will need to become more and more specialized around how the assets and the services work together to enable work, well-being, engagement, collaboration, and how they support and strengthen the corporate culture. And this will all lead to greater productivity. So the FM product that we need to promote is the user or workplace experience. The building and the assets just make up the facilities and they're just context by which this happens. It is about the people and how work gets done. And this will not change post-COVID. So what do occupiers want? 
Well, there's a famous old quote which says, people don't want a quarter inch drill, they want a quarter inch hole. You know, Levitt's quote underpins the fundamental ethos behind FM and the service industry and how it services the occupants of a building. But Peter Drucker was also right when he said that the customer rarely buys what the business thinks it is selling him. FM needs to be careful not to fall into this trap of what we call the curse of knowledge and think that this is about FM services or maintaining assets because it isn't. That is non-core and unsustainable. It is context as I like to refer to it. We have to think wider about what it is the customer is actually buying and it isn't what you might think. You know, I've been using this slide in presentations for almost two years, way before the coronavirus. It's my twist on the Levitt quote. Organizations don't want facilities, they want and need an effective and productive workforce. Intriguingly, this image is called Armageddon, and many industry pundits would have us all believe that COVID will bring about the death of the corporate office. The FM needs to recognize this and pivot if it wants to survive and thrive. The assets are just a means to an end for our clients. What we need to focus on is the value that we add to the enablement of work. If the CEO of your company or your client organization were to ask, whose responsibility is it to make sure the workplace is delivering to its full potential? What would be the response? Perhaps more poignantly, who would respond? Who is responsible for the workplace? Is it FM? Is it HR? Is it IT? Or is it even corporate real estate? In truth, the case could be made for each one of these disciplines. But I would advocate that we are in this state of disarray precisely because no one has taken overall responsibility for the workplace. So who is it going to be? FM was responsible for making the office COVID safe. So why are we not putting up our hands to create our future and the future workplace? Mintzberg's book came up with this idea of an emergent strategy. It's about being adaptable to uh, situations as it forces you to change course towards the realized strategy. The workplace opportunity and the enablement of work is the emergent strategy for FM. So how do we make this work for us? You know, FM is a management service that is delivered by people, for people, inside an organization. But now we need to make this about more than just the return to a COVID safe office. We are entering a period where organizations are rethinking the workplace following the COVID crisis and this global working from home experiment. The world of work has been disrupted and changed possibly forever. We've had this paradigm or perspective shift that I was speaking about earlier on in how work is going to get done. We need to take this opportunity and develop an emergent strategy and make the best of the opportunity that this presents. We do not want to be looking back on this time and saying, oh, that was our opportunity and we blew it. FM is in the spotlight and needs to pivot to get involved in the coordination and integrating the different interests, be it HR, IT, corporate real estate. We can be at the forefront of how work evolves and adapts and how the organization prepares for the future of work. This is not about screens and tape and sanitizing dispensers. We need to think bigger than just the return to a COVID safe office. The building is just a context and a means to an end for the organization. You know, as I said, organizations don't want facilities. They want and need a productive workforce. We need to provide an organization a vision of how FM supports work wherever it happens. This is important, and this speaks to the ability to be agile, flexible, and the capability and capacity to pivot. And only those that can do this will be the ones that survive. So what is the value of the office in a virtual world? Is the office dead? Well, there are a growing number of misconceptions about working from home. The research is already telling us that people are frustrated working from home, Private and individually focused work is great, but collaborative, teamwork, and serendipity just don't work on Zoom. And corporate culture is suffering and cognitive fatigue is setting in. So, do we think this guy is being productive? Is he comfortable? 
Is he looking after himself? Is he able to concentrate? Is he able to work productively? So, do we think he's ready to go back to the office? So, if he is, what office is he going to go back to? This office? Whilst the office has to be biosecure and COVID safe, it should be more hospital, it should not be more of a hospital than hospitality. This is not an environment anybody wants to work in. So what are the alternatives? We need to go back to the office for collaboration, teamwork, culture, and the office will remain, but it will be reinterpreted, reformed, and revived. But who's going to lead that change? You know, post-COVID, people are still going to come together for a purpose inside a facility. But it is this facility that's in question, particularly the corporate office. The purpose may be different than it was before, but the office will survive, but just in another form. We will still have hard and technical services needing to be delivered at the juncture of the asset and the organizational purpose, but it will be the soft services that are delivered for the benefit of the people that allows them to contribute to the company purpose. You know, we are at a watershed. We're in the stage of a strategic transformation of how the workplace is going to be used and how it's going to be measured, because without measuring it, you can't manage it. At the center of this transformation is the workplace and the understanding of how it magically contributes to the competitive advantage of the organization. You know, if customers say that their people are their biggest asset, why don't they measure the impact of the workplace on their people? Why do they not measure the people to the same degree they want us to measure buildings? What is the effect of FM services on corporate performance? Linking this is key to strategic FM. You know, compiling a 25 year life cycle plan is not strategic FM. Strategy is about changing the destiny of an organization. We need to be able to provide data on the performance of the facility in terms of its impact on people and corporate performance. We need to go beyond the typical customer satisfaction rate our service type surveys. These often only serve a purpose of trying to wave our own flag to the client and say, oh, look how good we are, which along with the perception of what I call watermelon SLAs, you know, the ones that are green on the outside and only red when you dig into the middle. And these only serve to alienate the client rather than building trust or partnership. You know, these corporate, this, sorry, these customer satisfaction services tell us very little about how the workplace supports the client's business and how this is experienced by staff. And they tell the client even less. We need to understand our client's business and cover, uncover and measure the metrics that matter most to both parties. The FM service provider that can link corporate performance people performance and facility performance will be the winners. And this is the interesting new frontier post COVID, homeworking. But what we need is not a competitor to the workplace, it's a collaborator. Not all work can be done from home. So we need to provide solutions to these companies that need to look after their staff working from home. And we need to create an environment that provides a compelling reason for people who want to come back to work. And this is all about providing a winning workplace experience. You know, workplace experience is made up of three environments. HR need to deliver on this, the cultural element of the workplace. IT need to deliver on the technical experience. And FM will need to deliver on the physical environment, as we do. But the workplace opportunity I am referring to is the integration of all three. And this role sits at the center. This role acts as a super connector, as they all have to be integrated. The role needs to underpin the seriousness of this issue to the C-suite. And the role removes obstacles, fosters collaboration, information sharing, and production to create, facilitate, and support a superior workplace experience. So can FM fulfill the role of the Chief Workplace Officer? Well, as we've seen, workplace is in our DNA, but the workplace represents the latest in a long line of opportunities for FM that we have failed to act upon. So will we step up to the plate? Do we have what it takes? Well, we have a culture of efficiency, risk mitigation, and cost restraint, a capacity across the operational, tactical, and strategic platforms. 
a competence to provide high-end customer-centric services 24, hour 24 hours a day that deliver a positive workplace experience, the capability to deliver to ISO-related professional standards, and the credibility to integrate with other support services in delivery of workplace projects, and the credentials as workplace has been at the center of facilities management for half a century. But we need core business skills if we are going to be effective. The core business proposition for workplace can be summed up in what I call the 12 E's that come together to make a winning workplace. Firstly, we have economic. If we are to create a great workplace, we need to be in step with the financial agenda of the organization. The workplace has to fit in with the organization's commercial objectives. We need to consider cost efficiency as well as space efficiency. Efficiency is the most important element in being able to justify workplace transformation, but this must not be to the detriment of the next item, and that's effectiveness. Effectiveness and efficiency are yin and yang. They are inseparable and need to be considered holistically to create opportunities. We then come to enablement, and this is more than just about productivity. A person's entire performance is impacted by a broad range of factors. A winning workplace enables communication, innovation, creativity and collaboration to all work in harmony and increase the impact on the organization. Our environment and physical space is key to our performance and well-being and 13 physical elements make up the physical workplace and they all need to be optimized and maximized and integrated to make up a winning workplace that will improve the healthy work environment and energize and inspire staff. Next comes emotion. The workplace may ultimately be a functional space, but FM should always consider the emotions and feelings that the space will elicit in the user. An emotional connection with the workplace is the very foundation of workplace experience. Item seven is engagement. Bringing people together in a place that fosters connection and unites them can be the first step in improving levels of employee engagement and retention, as well as linking the physical environment to people-based metrics, such as absenteeism, staff turnover, and employee satisfaction. Eight is expectation. Understanding which physical and service features impact the creation and management of an effective workplace for users allows you to improve brand, image identity, and culture that best reflects your organization and meets the expectations of all stakeholders. Nine is experience. Creating a superior workplace experience that can engender loyalty and advocacy requires the consideration of emotions and how the space makes users feel. 10 is environment. With the built environment contributing over 40% of the world's carbon emissions, a winning workplace must reduce environmental impact and be as sustainable and as responsible as possible. 11 is ether. And this is really interesting. Particularly in today's hyper-connected world, every organization and their workplace now exists both physically and digitally. The need to work from home during COVID has shown us the digital workplace opens up the potential for significant advantage or exceptional weakness for organizations. And lastly, we have evolution. The workplace, as with the organization it serves, needs to be in a permanent stage of what the Americans call beta development. Spaces and systems and services within the workplace should underpin the principle of organizational agility, flexibility, and be easily reconfigured to support growth and the changing business needs. And there you have the 12 E's of a winning workplace. So with change, there will always be winners and losers. But for the winners, these should be the takeaways. Frontline matters. FM is where the built environment delivers for people and the future of FMs is aligned to how those people work and how we enable that work to happen. Experience is everything. We need to move from the initial COVID emergency type response to recovery by our user experience. How a person feels is key to FM success and the well-being is the new productivity. Digital delivers. FM and technology enables people to work. FM needs to invest in this technical capability to help people succeed wherever they may work. 
And fourth, tune in to FM. Post COVID-19, the workplace is item number one on the board's agenda. So organizations need the expertise of FM professionals in their decision making. Then and only then can FM be at the center of all corporate real estate decisions. By moving higher up the value chain, the winning FM operators will place themselves at the heart of business decisions and gain the trust of the C-suite, where they can use their experience to connect people, place and performance that helps deliver confidence, well-being and a superior experience for all asset users. As FMs, we stand on the brink of the biggest opportunity we have ever had. This will be a tipping point for FM. Coronavirus has made the world realize how important the workplace is. Planning for recovery and resilience in the face of another pandemic when it comes is good, but these are just hygiene issues, pun intended. If we don't get this right, we won't have a discipline or an industry when the next pandemic strikes. In the meantime, if we cannot survive, all that planning counts for nothing. Workplace is no longer merely non-core services. It is a critical enabler of core business and competitive advantage. Our time is here as FM. The 12 E's bring us closer to enabling the core business and adding real value. It is FM to the power of two. You know, Mahatma Gandhi was supposed to have said, be the change that you want to see in the world. In fact, he never actually said that. Rather, he said the quote that I'm going to show you now, which I think is much more poignant, and it's one of the best leadership statements I have ever read. If we could change ourselves, then the tendencies of the world would also change. As man changes his own nature, so does the attitude of the world change towards him. Let's not wait to see what others do. And that's my story. Thank you, everybody, for, for listening. I hope you have a great conference and that we can turn the tide and turn FM into the enabler of core business for our clients and our organizations. Go well. Thank you. Mm -hmm.